Hello and welcome back to final round coverage from the 2021 Portland Open on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. We've got just nine holes remaining to decide our champion out here at Glendevere. You're watching Joe Mez Pro with Nate Sexton, Jeremy Colling, and Paul Uliberry. Kevin Jones firing back after the bogey he took on for seven birdies in the front nine is absolutely amazing. He is one shot ahead of Eagle McMahon, and they are three shots of him. ahead of Calvin Heimberg, Paul McBeth, Ricky Wysocki, and Simon Lazad. Nine holes ago. Let's do it. Getting it started on hole 10. Conspicuously long 815 feet, I feel. This one is through a gap, and it's flat at first, and then starts to go downhill. The basket tucked into the right. You've got the big maple forcing your line really, really wide. You can see the maple here that the drone is gonna fly under, but the basket is actually pushed all the way back into the first. So you've gotta go really wide with the forehand to get around. Roller is also an option on that second shot. So Kevin Jones still in heat check mode. Did that get a huge skip or did that just Don't bury in the ground? I think, I think it just buried that in the ground, but. That was just kind of setting the scene that he's still in that mode, but maybe not so much anymore. This is this is really nice. That sets up that great angle. We saw him a little bit of a misfire on his approach in round two. See if he can make the adjustment here. Ricky is getting some big shots with this disc. Out driving eagle. I mean, that says so much. <laughs> and those are not out of bounds. I guess the out of bounds line stops way before those. Those are just for advertisement. And not only that, you can actually, a provisional rule here, you can actually move those if they're in your way, which is uh, something you don't normally get to see when there's an obstacle in the course. Wish I would have known that in the practice round. Kevin Jones going big roller here, and this is a looks big. Yeah, it's, it's a good really opportunity good. to save the uh, the par, but there's just no chance of birdie if you don't get a good tee shot off. I feel like I've been seeing a lot of people come up short right, mm. right behind a couple guardians. I think it's just so tough to get all the way down there and beat those trees. Roller second shot is a great play. You don't have to worry about the ceiling, but it's also blind, so getting the distance right is a very tough thing to do. Also, throwing rollers downhill. Yeah, it is a little tricky to get your angle right as the hill falls away. Simon comes up about 70 feet left of the basket. Eagle going to be about 30 feet long. Great shot there. And you can see from that wider angle that Ricky and Eagle have, the ceiling gets so much easier to hit. They don't have to quite keep their... Shots as low driven, just barely over the hill. As He's happy with that, but that's a good 25, almost 30 feet short as well, I feel like. Mm -hmm. So it has been probably about two hours <laughs> since Kevin last saw a par. <laughs> since hole one. It's been one of those days so far for Simon as Ricky does yeah. knock down the long putt. But Simon's been kind of all over it and see if he can rattle off a couple on this back nine, save face a little bit. I am just looking through these scores as Eagle makes that birdie putt and that ties him with Kevin now at 19 under par. I'm just so surprised at how many birdies there are on so many of these holes. We talked about this on the front nine, hole eight, 13 birdies. That was a hole that we saw three birdies or less in, in other rounds. And just people are getting crazy birdies on this hole, which is a yep. Yep. this is a tough hole, right, Nate? Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. 30 players birdie this one. Such a difficult two shot hole. People are good out there. People are really good out there. And they're bringing the noise here. Right around 30 of them. <laughs> yeah. Hole 11, par three, 350, one feet. 
completely blind from the tee. That tree on the right is kind of your best guide as to where you want your drive to swing in. You want to push it as close to that tree as possible with maybe an overstable fairway driver, maybe a mid-range, and just try to barely slide in left and somehow avoid that bunker that Eagle has found, both round one and two. Going FD3 this time, and did he finally make the adjustment? Oh, just rode the edge. Oh, no, he did not. In. Heartbreaking. Eagle just not quite dialed in here on 11. Oh, get up in the stupid air. Still with a pig so thrown crazy. low. It's still a putt. Just throw it in the air. That looks a little bit more stupid. Good. Yeah, <laughs> that's stupid air. <laughs> Kevin, that's perfect. That is stupid. Yeah. I think that's his M1. I could be wrong. Oh, no, that's actually his... Uh... Well, look here. I mean, watch this line. This actually is yeah. up into the stupid air. <laughs> it's not staying down below <laughs> the stupid air, so this is going to be... This is getting there perfectly. <laughs> and that's, make, that's called making an adjustment. That's, hard, that's going to school on the guy before Correct. you. Correct. I believe it's actually his F5. Maybe a little deep. Well, at least it's low so it can skip underneath those limbs. I like that play. I was seeing some other people do this today. Kind of aim for the base of the tree. You don't have to park it. You don't have to go next to the bunkers and have a nice little putt down the hill. Yes. Ricky Wysocki in the stupid air and in the basket for a birdie. Fantastic putt. Back-to-back -back big putts for Ricky. Simon needs this one. Yes. And he can get it. And that is a long drought of birdies for Simon that he just erased with that nice putt. Yeah, two under. I mean, not a great score for the level that these guys are playing at, but... He's three under for the round at this point. Oh, yeah. Okay. Birdie hole two, three, and then... Eagle saves. A so ball. even better. Yeah, even better. That's great. Three under is fine. I mean, like we saw Simon absolutely go off on the back nine Thanks, here. So he's it, his game plan yeah. suits this back yeah. nine well. And if he gets some things going the right way, you know, he's not definitely not out of it. On to hole 12, par four, 822 feet. You've got OB on the right early, and that's really about all the OB you have. This one bush and dead tree in the middle can present problems, especially for the roller play. Then you've got the wall of trees about three quarters of the way down that 815 foot distance. And then the nice, huge old growth maple here with the basket underneath. Let's take a look at how Macbeth is keeping up. And he is at six under. Look at this putt. Dancing in Ooh. 17 under par thus far for both Paul and Calvin Heimberg. So important names to be noted. Obviously, they are still in the mix as Kevin Jones, I believe, just got to 20 under par. He just took the lead. Yeah, 20 under par. So Ooh, that's smoked out to the right. One, this, the, as the shot is just Thank blasted you. down the fairway, one of the things that we have to mention, if you haven't watched round one and two, first off, go back and watch round one and two. So what are you doing here? The but the finishing holes. Oh, oh yeah. ramping over the wow. bunker. Incredible. Wow. <laughs> That's nice, dude. <laughs> three shots back where That's Paul awesome. and Calvin are is perfectly fine because anything can happen on these final five holes. Some of the most brutal five holes finishing holes that you're going to see in disc golf. And so there's nothing safe, nothing sacred. No story is over with four or five holes to go, which is something that we see on a lot of golf, disc golf courses. A lot of easier finishes, not this course. That was a nice bounce off that tree. I think Simon's going to have room to run up. He's going to need it because there's still a lot of distance That's left funny. on this hole. No, yeah, was a, this is the hole. Good breaks. Awesome tee shots. 
out there to the left is just fine. There's a lot of backhand and sidearm gaps through the next row of Douglas Firs. You got mad? To stay up. Go. Oh, yeah. Simon's been landing at that mark all day long. He just knocked down a nice one. Look forward to seeing if he can get two in a row. Yeah. Kevin Go. going big forehand. Shot, Kevin. And that's in the circle. Place where he's been really comfortable all day. It's kind of a comfy place to be, that circle. It's like a... Some days, some days it is, and some days it, it isn't. But <laughs> <laughs> for the guys we watch play on these cards, real nice. It's like a soft nice little, and yeah, and like nice a and big cozy. sleeping bag. Eagles right there at the edge of the circle. Let's see if yeah, oh, Ricky's go. going forehand. Go. <laughs> of course he doesn't like it, and of course yes. it's still great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, my God, I'm long. Let's go. <laughs> Absolutely parked. <laughs> That's the beauty of having Ricky Wysocki mic'd up. Oh, my goodness. So big opportunity coming up here for Kevin. First, Simon. Yeah. He is in, and now he is at 17 under par. But is that going to be four back of the lead? Can Kevin Jones extend his lead to two shots? Dude is absolutely rolling right now. Eight under for the round. How can you possibly have nine birdies on this course through 12 holes? I mean, I guess we've just seen it, but it just seems... When you're playing it, it doesn't seem like that's feasible. He just birdies eight and nine, which is just a rare feat that we've only seen thus far Eagle do in round one. And then birdie all the other ones, too. Unbelievable yeah. stuff. Yeah. Hole 13, par 3, 360 feet uphill. I think all these guys are going to play wide hyzer here. Remains to be seen how wide, how high, how much you rely on the skip. I've heard tales of some of the big power players going really, really high. Spike. But we'll see if these guys try to keep it low and play the flare. Nope. This is kind of more that high and spiky play, swinging it in. With that play, it makes me think that that headwind that we were feeling just maybe about an hour before these guys, maybe it's died down just a bit. I don't really like the wide high play. I like this height. No spike, you get a little, there's that nice skip. I think that's kind of lucky to land where he was right there, kind of on that hard pan yeah, and sure. get the big skip because anywhere else you can see that they're kind of digging in. But that spiky, as we saw Ricky's kind of land, it kind of, Took the energy out. And Great shot. Oh, wow. Inside line and gets up there. And, and you were saying, Germ, that you guys played in a headwind. I played even before you. There was actually six inches of snow on the ground for my group. <laughs> so clearly different conditions, well, you know, two. as the day goes on. This looks sawed off a little bit. Simon? Did you bring your glow okay. discs to start the round off is my only question. I always do, man. Sexton Firebird glows bright. Dang, how'd you turn that into a plug? <laughs> Good job. Eagle McMahon. Oh, Eagle McMahon! Hey! From 49 feet. And knocks the basket over. That thing had some pace on it. And this is just such an important putt. I mean, he's starting to, starting to lose contact if he misses that. Has to have it and gets yeah. it. Yeah, there's something about awesome. a three-shot lead compared to a two-shot lead. You know, because you you see all the time yes. Ricky makes it as well. These guys are just loading this basket up. But you see it all the time, bogey birdie. That's very feasible. Three shot swing in one hole, very rare. I don't want to be a video. 
Turn it off! An Eagles Trail premieres here on the Jomez Pro YouTube channel Friday, June 18th. Visit jomezpro.com to sign up for special upcoming Discmania giveaways. I can't wait to watch that. I don't want to be on video. Hole Guess four, what? Yeah, hole 14, par 4. Long par 4, 985 feet. These guys have a chance to get around that circle's edge, but, man, this is playing deep. Really want to see them get the right angle off the tee here. I think that's the biggest thing is getting this Anheuser, oh. and he doesn't like it right away. Well, that's going to be Heisering at the end. I mean, it's I don't kind think of so. great. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you got to love it. <laughs> Kevin, going roller. And this is beat ridiculous. Really, oh. really good. Can I get away from those trees, though? I don't think that you can reach the basket now because those trees just, it's not going to allow him to swing 470 feet. That was really weird. Keep this in mind. This hole was birdied only one time in round two by Gavin Rathbun. That's what we're dealing with right now in hole 14. One of the hardest holes to birdie on the course. Thank you. Thanks. Only five holes left. Here's the cheat code. Disc that rolls backwards. Ooh, low burn. Oh, that has got the cut angle to go the distance. Oh, my... Oh, rip city, it's baby. curling back left. Rip city. No way. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What just happened? It, it, 730 feet is what happened, Paul. 730 feet. It did seven feet. flexes. <laughs> now I'm mad, Nate. You were mad on the other one. 130 feet. Oh, my goodness. I don't even want to watch this because oh, that Simon's is just deep. OB deep. Everyone's cheering. They don't realize he's just gone out of bounds, but done it in two. That's ridiculous. Well, that's what you get. <laughs> you make Yuli mad, and that's what happens. Oh, you got to go. This go. is probably part. It kind of just is. It's fantastic. <laughs> yes. Can you imagine? What if what if Ricky's discs did what he thought they were going to do? What's going on up there? Sweet. You know, like right. every yeah. time he throws, he's like, come <laughs> on, no. Wow, that was, that was incredible. <laughs> to get that much power with just yeah. absolutely no run-up, yeah. no sw follow-through swing. That's a mutant. He's throwing a mutant approach. Well, he's, he's like... Not he's, he's barely 300 feet away. He's throwing Maybe a mid-range approach on 1,000. Remember that we, we lasered this at 1,040 feet. That's not a good shot. No. No, it isn't. No, that circle's edge aiming right at the green, which he has. We've seen a couple air balls from today. So. Yeah, aside from that putt that we just saw in the last hole, Eagle hasn't really been knocking down this putt that he's got right here. And this is wind. Gary with the OB behind, and that is a huge letdown opportunity loss with Kevin Jones taking the par. Oh, no. The wind really yeah. wreaking Don't havoc here. Man. And then Kevin really dodging a bullet. True. Nobody birdie. Now, I mentioned that there was one birdie in round yeah. two, just to set up the fact that we have a ridiculous... I mean, we thought 13 birdies was cool on hole eight. 14 birdies on this 1,040-foot par four and with I, this wind. I have a debt to pay because I played with Connor O'Reilly. He made the birdie. I told him immediately... Congratulations on your Joe Mez shout out. The guy had 380 into the green. He might not have rolled at 730 feet like Eagle did, but he boomed a roller and absolutely parked it. And so, Connor, 
well done. And he got up and down like he was supposed to, which is yeah, the, the important it. thing. He parked it. Perfect shot. Hole 15, par 3. This is the toughest hole we have left. So much mm. potential for out of bounds. Yeah, maybe the da most dangerous because this tee shot could just be a nightmare. What was, was the more wind than doing? maybe. I mean, this this is just a... Was it a, was yeah. it a straight headwind? Yeah, it was definitely blowing headwind right to left. Lay up to the right, or to the left. That's the smart play. Two shots the play was. No need to attack any of that danger. This is going to be out of bounds. Unless it's so bad that it actually hyzers back left safe. No. There's so much out of bounds over there on that long left side. It's a nice design in that way. Yeah. Like if you do bail, start bailing left, it's just more and more OB waiting for you over there. We've seen Eagle get there with this wide forehand. Is he going to be able to do it with today's wind? Could really put some pressure hardest on hole, the park job. Hardest hole in the day. Sorry, Nate, to cut you off. But hardest hole in the day, 3-8-1 average. That is harder than we've seen any other hole play all week, including hole one. Eagle just barely crossing over that line there. Wow. Well, what about Kevin just kind of staying in his own lane? Absolutely. Laying up to the left? I mean, Beautiful that's a really tough play to make in that situation, especially with the guys chasing him that are chasing him. You know what I'm saying? And, and to be able to lay up and just say, you know what? Par is good for me. I think it's a great play. Kevin going across here. Just needs to get down. Go in. That's the right miss. He's, he's a little bit long, obviously, but has to make sure to clear that tall grass. Oh, man, the wind really picking up. Simon now for bogey, and look at that, just electing to take the five here, and that's pretty smart there. Anything can happen, obviously, with that mound in the wind. Well, no harm, no foul. Just yeah. at least it stayed in bounds. You can yep. easily hit and roll OB or, or something like that. So This for bogey. Oh, Sit. No, 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 no. No. Oh. No. Wow. No. 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 That's disgusting. How on earth can you even breathe after something like that happens? Playing it safe. And now this putt is for a six. Wow, and I... Oh my gosh. I avoided all spoilers. I didn't... I don't know. I did not know that was coming. That was the slowest roll. Terrible yes. luck. Well, it was a really actually not a bad putt. Caught a lot of chains on yeah. the left side. Oh, the yeah. wind just pushes it out, lands on the worst angle ever, and then just slow rolls its way. And he's still got a little oh my left gosh, for that. Yeah. Uh, I mean. Oh, my gosh. So it ends up a seven. And that's it. Playing it safe. I mean, that's there's not enough holes left for him to come back from a mistake like that. That's the right play. In that situation, you're taking – a, a double bogey out of play by playing it safe. He just, there's no way you lay up that putt for par from inside the circle. There's no way you lay up that next putt from inside the circle. It's just, no, absolutely catastrophe. Well, that and takes it, him to what? Minus 18? Yeah, yeah. he's two back. He's, oh, that's not, that, yeah. He's not, he's, okay. He's absolutely not, not seven, out of it, seven but, sounds way worse, but I guess he had a two shot lead. Yeah, okay. but, but he, you're saying he's not out of it, but at the same time, he's got to have the shortest memory in the history of disc golf because. Something like that happens. How can you have the courage to attack holes and pretend like that didn't just happen? Ricky, however, oh, okay. making a huge putt from the edge of the circle, taking the two, Dang. and all of a sudden now he is tied at 20 under par. Man. Wow. He's sailed that thing. He's unobstructed, but he's way out there. I have a hard time believing that this is even 
birdieable right now with this headwind. Yeah, it's just ripping. Yeah, Absolutely. Take ripping. Eagle's forehand flips that over. He's going to be similarly wide outside circle two. Pretty incredible that he can manage that much distance in a headwind and actually go long. Yeah. A and high the whole time. It's pretty bizarre still. After all these years of commentating, Eagle McMahon, I'm still impressed. Well, big opportunity for Kevin here. If he can somehow manage to sneak something into the circle and get a get a putt, yeah. that could go a long ways. Yeah. It's going to say a lot about his resiliency and his bounce back ability. Going with a roller. Wow. I like it, kind of. Looks, Where is it? Looks like it came up a bit short on the yeah. right. The only thing I don't like about that roller play is that there's a curb that if you do have it rolling flat, it's just going to stop you dead in your tracks. But other than that, it's a pretty good play. Is that what happened? He got hit, hit the curb? Not, not quite sure. Curb check? Just like that, the sun's back out. Ricky's tied for the lead. Yep. Yeah. A, absolutely tied yeah. for the lead. What happened? <laughs> he just made a sick putt. I mean, he's he's made some really good putts in this back nine. He's already five down on the back. I don't believe that Kevin was laying that up. I think he he's got to be thinking. I he's got to make all the birdies. Especially if he's seen any of our footage thus far and seeing how far Eagle is getting on his drive on 18. I'm, I don't think anybody does. When I walk up to the tee, I have these game plans. I know where I want to land. I know the distance to the basket from those positions. I think I'm going to land in these same areas every single time, but you never know. I know how far I am. I know the height now. Having the Bushnell rangefinder, no matter where I land, gives me that extra level of confidence. Two holes to play. Number 17, par 3, 485. Low ceiling through the gap and then into the trees and uphill finish. So this is a tough hole to park. You kind of need a little bit of luck with the trees at the end. All these trees at the beginning are about 40 feet or so short. If you can beat those, you might find circle one, but this is kind of one of those holes you feel like you're gonna need to make a nice sizable putt to earn the birdie. No, seriously, get back door, back door. <sighs> Ricky turning that drive over Best case scenario, he's going to ah, be works. 50 feet. He likes being at that range, I feel like. Yeah, maybe early in the tournament, but with only two holes to go, certainly that basket seems to sometimes get a bit smaller. This has potential. Does it finish? Yes. Can it miss the trees? Enemy at the gates. No, it cannot. But still, there's, there is that 40-footer uphill. Oh, that was looking so good, and it still might even work out great. Yeah, it absolutely oh, does. Yeah. But that little tiny tickle that it got there in the, the initial gap slowed it down from maybe being part. Kevin has to, has to go birdie birdie. Oh, no. And that is not going to yield a birdie. So that I'm, my heart still goes out for him, what just happened on 15. That's just inexplicable. Yeah, that was brutal. Absolutely brutal. Beautiful wow. out shot. I mean, <laughs> a valiant effort. Hey, and just like what happened to him on that, I mean, there's no OB around this, this basket, but it's a big slope. These guys have to be really careful with uh, their bids as well. Huh. Oh, Ricky oh, just oh, oh. off left low. Ready to raptor that one in. Can Eagle get sole possession of first place? Something he hasn't had in a long time. And once again, just not burying those putts that we're so accustomed to seeing him make. 
But still, that being said, 20 under par, he is tied for the lead. Not quite Simon's day either. Only being four back, pretty great performance from Simon. Yeah, seriously. The 16 under in three rounds. I mean, with one to go, we could potentially get to 17 under. That's saying a lot of here at Glendevere. What a final hole to decide this thing. If if it even, we might need more holes. I yeah. mean, playoff looms because this is not an easy get at all. We've seen Eagle get up there miraculously twice. I don't know if it's allowed to do that three times. I didn't <laughs> think it was allowed to do it once. We'll see if he can put the pressure on, climb that hill in two. I don't know that anybody else has really had quite that kind of success on this hole. I think we'll see the roller. See what kind of position Rick and Eagle can find themselves in. And we've got to check in as well with Paul Macbeth. 19 under, 8 under on the round, walking up this fairway. And going into the last hole, he knows he's got to get to 20 under with any hope of coming out victorious here in Portland. This approach so difficult, getting up that hill. Get up there. He's probably 430 out, and that's going to leave him still 60 feet out. So Calvin, also at 19 under, 9 under par, which is already a course record. He needs to birdie this one as well. That's going to finish him about 65, 70 feet left. Wow. And Ricky does not Don't go roller. Is that? Yes. Whoa. Let's okay. Go. And so that's Thank in the you. fairway, so that's okay. That allows Ricky to maybe go roller or big backhand air shot second. Yeah, I think it lines up really well for the roller on that right side. This oh. looks too far right. Beats a lot Eagle. of trees. Yeah. Okay, now that is in danger of being in a bad spot, though. It's going to be on the right side of those Douglas firs in between that OB fence line. So A meter is not a lot of room either no. to, to when you want to throw 700 feet. So perhaps advantage Ricky Wysocki right now. I mean, this is a great opportunity for him to put the pressure on Eagle and make him have to go bigger than maybe he even has the opportunity to go. Well, honestly, Eagle doesn't have to get a lot of distance to have a chance to get up that hill, as we know already. That's right. Beautiful. Hopefully that doesn't curl too far right. That's be a good. Slightly awkward run up, but still out in the open. Calvin to get to 20. Must have it. And that's off the cage. And Paul Macbeth, one last chance to get to 20 under par. 60. Five feet. Wow. <laughs> of course he makes it. And if you want to watch this entire round, go to Gatekeeper's YouTube channel and check out all of the chase card action. Thanks to them for allowing us to show you. That gave those. me chills. That was deep. Yeah. What? So Ricky and Eagle both know Cut. the situation. They, they heard those cheers. Great. Goal. Angle. And Ricky's yes. fired up. Oh, why wouldn't he be? I mean, that's almost to the base of the hill. Fantastic shot. What does Eagle have? Stand still. Stand still. Goes to the roller. Stand still roller. Okay. Pretty dang good. Yeah, he's he's, he's gonna have what a high hyzer from there. He's pretty far out left. The way this gap opens up, though, being far left as long as you're short enough yeah, isn't 30, right? that bad, 21. especially for True. someone like Eagle. Yeah, he's got 30. all the distance he needs. 
I think that it opens up more from where Eagle is, honestly, because the wide hyzer opens that gap more, and the basket is on the left-hand side of that right. mandatory, so, and the green. But Ricky's, like, almost forehand pig. Yeah, he's got a, he's got a little dinker up shot for sure. Kevin, after that beautiful roller tee shot, he goes roller again. Now, that's going to be okay. There are some openings up there on the right side, but... I think it's just a formality now for Kevin. He's got to be heartbroken. Mm, did not get the height. I think Simon's just ready to get off the course and prepare for the next one. Yeah, he was walking back like he was sleepwalking, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so match play. Paul and Nico obviously looking on anxiously. If Eagle can put one close, it'll put all the pressure on Ricky. Is that too wide? No, it's not. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's so yeah. good. That is so good. Wow, 20 feet. Yeah, so. Putt, man. Paul understands what that means. Oh God. Thank you. Not even to Ricky's drive yet, so he doesn't have much. You called it, Nate. Looks like he has pig in hand as Kevin goes circle outside circle. Hey, circle's edge. Honestly, good effort there. I mean, Kevin's running that. I mean, that's an opportunity to get a three, and who knows? It's not the forehand pig. Backhand pig up the hill. Looking pretty solid. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yes. A little curl out there at the end, but in the circle. Ricky makes that. I don't know. I feel like there's some hidden demons following Eagle around from last year's port or two years ago's Portland Open where he missed a short putt to really close things out. Oh, wow. What? That's how you go out. That's how you do it. Kevin Jones, folks. What? A performance, five pars on the day. Just not the result he was looking yeah, for. Yeah, he was almost like, oh, of course I made it. Yeah. He'll learn from this and he'll get better. Oh, no. Ricky Low. Simon just wants to get out of there. And and good on you for doing that because this, this for the win. It. This is for the win. Six under par is enough for Eagle McMahon to be the Portland Open champion. Not his best putting performance on the day and probably the wobbliest putt I've seen him make from that range, but it's in, and he's the champion. Let's go! I love you, Oregon! Eagle, I don't have words. Your heart's got to be going a mile a minute. How do you feel right now? I don't even know. I. I counted myself out, like you know, um, before Kev Kevin's incident. I thought it was, I thought it was Kevin's, and then all of a sudden, it was a game. And I knew everything was close, but I honestly didn't really know the scores coming down the stretch. Um, I was talking to my friend Joey, and uh, I just asked him, "What, what do I do?" I was going through the scores in my head. I thought I might be up one. I thought I might have been tied, um, but I just figured. You know, it's not going to change my game plan no matter what I do. Uh, you have to make good shots um, all the way out. And then I had a, it was a tester. And all I could think about was this elevated basket with the Portland Open uh, band in front of me. Thinking back to 2019, really happy to not go to the playoff. And uh, I honestly can't believe I'm holding this right now. It did not feel like it was going my way, but I just told myself, Stay in the moment, focus on each and every shot. If it was meant to be, it was meant to be, and it was meant to be. <laughs> on 14, you threw over a 700-foot roller on that hole. You didn't get up and down. It kind of left the door open for Kevin. Then what was going through your mind at that point in the round? 
It was really interesting because I knew he was up to just going uh, off the top of my head. Um, you know, I didn't really feel like I was playing bad, but the middle stretch, I feel like I got unlucky and then the guys were just shredding. So it just kind of felt like I started to get left behind. But, you know, I just weathered the storm and now I have this beautiful piece of wood in my hand. I remember last time I really rushed the putt. I was just kind of feeling nervy and uh, I was just thinking about all the good moments I had in disc golf, like making the putt at GBO, making uh, the final putt at DGLO, and those were because I took a little bit more time, went through my routine, and uh, you know, just trusted myself. Um, you know, I honestly can't believe that I'm standing here right now. I'm, it's completely surreal. I just really feel the, the love up here. I mean, it just, it's so compatible with my life, all the things I love, you know, green, green scenery, these huge mountains, uh, rivers, you know, really great places to eat. And, uh, you know, every time I come up here, I just feel super welcomed. And, uh, you know, I just, it's, it's an amazing state. Called FaceTime Dad. <laughs> How did it happen? I can't believe you have the same exact pot. Dude, that's the fire, but that's the way you need to win with that kind of adversity for worlds. You need, you need that kind of fire. On the last putt, I was just walking up the stairs going, okay, I can deal with this if he messes it. I can deal with it. No overtime. That was what the Nuggets did on game seven. was like, we're not going to overtime. We're not losing it today. Joey said, just be like Nikola Jokic right here. All right, I gotta go sign autographs. I'll call you later. Oh, I wish I was there to celebrate. I'll celebrate for you. Wow, I mean, Congratulations to Eagle McMahon. I think he's the guy that we thought would do it. I don't think we thought it would go down the way that it did. But in the end, the combination of power, control, even despite some struggles on the putting green, he's able to take a one-shot victory over Paul and Ricky. Unfortunate for Ricky on that last hole. I really expected him to make that. I thought we were going to a playoff on hole one. Not to be. It's Eagle McMahon's day in Portland. Looks like this one really means a lot to him. And you were dead on, Yuli, about him thinking about last year or two years ago, I guess. You know, there's something to be said, too. He has the power, the putts, all that stuff. But at the end of the day, disc golf is a mental game. And he had to grab those thoughts from past experiences. And that's what brought him over the edge. You heard it, you know, from himself right there. Thank you to the Founders Club. We love you. And we will see you next weekend for some Silver Series action also here in Portland at the Resistance Discs Open at Trojan Park.